We have a double robbery. This does look like it is linked to the other homicide that we had on Reservoir Road. We can see the lab just to shoot you. Good. Does it look like this guy set out to kill him? It's hard for me to believe that was not intentional. Now we have two homicide victims. And he's graduated from robbing and shooting to killing. Now he's a serial killer. Who like killed his mother? This is what we need to break this case wide open. Anytime my, my cell phone rings early in the morning hours, you know it's not good. You don't call me out for any other reason than somebody's dead or there's a chance somebody's going to die. Chuck Ray was a robbery detective for 15 years before joining Homicide. He will be the lead investigator on this case. I uh, just received a call up on Reservoir Road to a shooting. One of the victims was shot in the hand. Uh, another victim was shot in the abdomen. Uh, both of them have uh, already been rushed to the hospital. The subject that shot in the abdomen is not looking good. It's pretty severe. Were you the first shooting here? Yes, sir. You had two different incidents. What happened? First, a Hispanic male said that he was coming out, and he saw a guy standing there. The guy told him, give me everything you got. The guy took his wallet, said the guy took a step back, and pow, shot went through his hand. The guy takes off running. Coming down the sidewalk. Bad guy. Yeah. Okay. And he saw a mother and her son. She was loading stuff into her car. The guy shot the son and snatched the mom's purse. And she said he took off running in this area. All right. Let's see what we got down here. One shell casing is all that we've seen so far. It is a 380 caliber. Well, what we have is a, a double robbery. The victims didn't run. They didn't try to fight or resist. It's a particularly violent man who shoots people for no reason. The first shooting happened here at apartment 308. That was a Hispanic male, Jose. There was an apparent 380 shell casing laying just outside the door. The other shooting took place the next building down in front of the steps. A white male, Mr. Joseph Patingle, was found laying in the grass. In that same area, we've located some clothing, a blanket. Those could very well possibly be the victims. Sounds like he shot this guy, and he's running this way. Nope. Hey, there they are. And no, he didn't run. He hung out here for like five or ten minutes. After he shot the guy? After he shot the first guy. After a normal person robs or shoots somebody, they want to get out of Dodge. They don't want to hang around. This guy, he don't care. He just hung around five, six, seven minutes. Just hung around. Odd. Very odd. This is Detective Ray. I don't care what time. Well, that was dispatch. The first victim was shot in the hand is in stable condition. He's going to be fine. The second subject was taken away to another hospital and a little after five, but he actually expired. The victim is 50-year-old Joseph Robert Batingle, Jr. He was a professor of radiologic imaging sciences at the University of Arkansas Medical Center in Little Rock. He was taking his mother home after a visit when he was robbed and shot. He had two grown sons. Where are they all hiding? Up here? Reservoir? Up are they land. spread out or just... No, they're pretty much up here. Robbery unit. They've been working on a subject who is targeting Hispanics. The robber, even after he gets what he wants, when there's no reason to do it, he'll shoot the victim, I guess, just out of meanness. There are some similarities. The parent shell casing is of the same caliber type, 380. And we do have a Hispanic victim. So 
Well, we better hope it's not the same guy. Oh, I can see it right here. Yeah, you can see this. A projectile actually struck one of the victims and ended up into this door jam. If we're able to retrieve it, we will send it to the state crime lab for ballistics. There's a lot of work left to be done here at the scene. The crime scene search unit is still here working, and they'll be working through the morning. I've got to get back to the office. There's uh, family members and witnesses that are there that need to be interviewed, and I'm going to head down there and start those interviews now. It looks like it's in pretty good shape for ballistics comparison to possibly get a match against a specific firearm use. I'm about to go in and interview Jose. He was the victim that was shot initially up on Reservoir Road uh, prior to the Batango homicide. He's been in our town for about four months. He's scheduled to return back to California tomorrow. Watching Chuck interview Jose, which is our first victim from this morning. Here's an account of it in his own words. Detective Kevin, or Bart Simpson, will be assisting on the case. Let's talk about the guy, white or black. Black. How tall? My height is six foot. Tell me about tonight. What happened tonight? I went down to my apartment. I see him walk by me. And then all I remember is when I put my stuff down, he ran up on me, and that's when he had the gun in my fist. And I started to get everything in my pockets, and I told him, okay, you got everything now. And he started just picked up the blue bag, the wallet, and everything else inside, and just ran off. I thought he ran off. They said, no, I hear him come back. Shoots me once. And you said he come running back? Yeah. And did nothing more than just to shoot you? Yeah. Okay. A second spent shell casing has been located near where the homicide victim, Joseph Batengel, was found. It is also a 380 caliber. We are setting up the Leica scanner. It'll do a laser accurate scan of the entire crime scene. we're scanning is in front of the first stairwell where the first victim was shot in the hand. We found one 380 spent shell casing and inside the victim's apartment we located a projectile lodged in the door jam just inside the doorway. The second victim that was fatally shot was found lying just outside his stairwell. On the other side of the stairwell we found the second casing. It appears to be the same as the first, the 380 caliber. You know, I finished interviewing uh, Mrs. Patango as well as Jose, and Jose tells me that the guy that did it six foot tall, 200, both of them said that suspect shot him after they complied. Have you talked to Robbery or or anybody about this guy? It sounds like the same deal we've been having with the 380 and the Hispanics and all that. He's been shooting them even after they comply and stuff. Maybe they've got a piece of information that'll help us find out this, who this guy is. How many robbery shootings since he started? Seven. That's where the victims were actually shot. All 380s. What he does is he basically comes up on them, does his robbery, and before he leaves, he generally shoots them. Almost always in the leg. The victims in these cases, have they all been Hispanic? All but one are Hispanic males, but we do have one white male. But that's predominantly who he's after? Yes. It's common knowledge on the street that a lot of times they don't like to use banks. They'll keep their uh, currency on them. And what kind of guy is this that after he robs somebody, he comes back and shoots them when he, I mean, they've complied? It's like his calling card. But until this morning, he never killed anybody. Correct. Does the ammo of them this morning match the ammo of the ones that you've had? It does. Same basic description every time. He's six foot, uh, slim build. And he, he's always by himself. Nobody ever sees a car. Everything seems to, to uh, push us. That he lives on a reservoir yeah. somewhere. You all already have your shell casings at the crime lab, all of them? Yes. Get mine out there as soon as I can. We won't know for sure if we're dealing with the same gun until we have our the ballistics tests done. But, you know, the ammo is definitely pointing that direction in the 380. Right now, Detective Simpson and I are heading out to meet with Dr. Kokus at the Arkansas State Crime Lab. He's completed the autopsy, and we are hoping that we can gain some information that would lead us in the direction that we need to go. What are we looking at, Doc? 
These are the x-rays of Mr. Batangle's upper torso, lower abdomen. He's just shot one time. He had an entrance wound just along the lower edge of the front right rib cage. As it traveled through the abdomen, it caused a considerable amount of internal bleeding. That bullet was recovered. It is consistent with the 380. Does it look like this guy set out to kill him when he shot him? The bullet did strike a known vital area. It's, it's hard for me to believe that the fact that he was struck where he was struck was not intentional. Right now, we're heading out to our ballistics lab to take the uh, 380 shell casings from our homicide uh, and have them compared to the 380 shell casings and the numerous robbery shootings that we've had in our city. We won't know till the shell casings are matched if the person that we're looking for is the same suspect that our robbery detectives have been looking for. We brought that uh, shell casing that we talked to you about earlier from the homicide that we had this morning. Yeah. I know that you've been working on the robbery shootings that we've had, the rash of them that we've had. Is there any way that I could get you to kind of pull it up? Yeah. The homicide cartridge case is going to be on the right side, and the robbery cartridge cases are going to be on the left side. I'm looking for what we call chamber marks, and those occur when the uh, cartridge case is actually lifted from the magazine into the chamber. When it's pushed forward by the slide, the cartridge will hit the ramp going into the barrel of the chamber. And that can leave characteristics that can be linked back to a particular firearm. All right, guys, remember I've got the uh, robbery on the left and the homicide on the right. You know, in my heart, I'm sitting there hoping that it ain't the same guy, because if it is, this guy's escalated to a whole new level. Uh, we've got some chamber marks here, guys. Mr. Joseph Patingo was shot, and his mother was robbed. We've had a string of robberies out in this area. The shell casings on every scene looks like a 380. We won't know for sure if we're dealing with the same gun until we have ballistics tests done. If it is the same guy, this guy's escalated to a whole new level. Uh, we've got some chamber marks here, guys. I'm going to pull up on the screen and show you some chamber marks that I found uh, towards the case mouth. As you see here, we've got good individual characteristics from the cartridge cases being chambered into the gun so that I can conclusively say that at some point, both of these cartridge cases were uh, chambered in the same firearm. 100% sure it's the same weapon that cycled or chambered both these rounds. Yeah, it's the same, same gun. Well, that links them all together. I mean, that's just it. It links them yeah. all together now. Now it means we've got to find this guy pretty quick. Because yeah. he's went from robbing and shooting people to robbing and killing people. I mean, we're going to start feeling some real pressure to get him before he can do it again. The heat's coming. There ain't no doubt about that. Now that it's clear that the homicide and robbery shootings are linked to the same gun, Detectives are looking at all recent cases to see if any might lead them to a suspect. I appreciate it. Robbery detective Linda Hudson has uncovered a report on a hit and run that happened a week ago. 380 casings were found on scene. What happened was evidently a white Impala struck three vehicles. Residents there heard at least two gunshots and they saw three black males and this white car was left running there at the scene when police got there. No one around, and there was a 380 shell casing, a spent casing, and a live round lying right by the car. The casings were compared to several of our robberies down here, and they all match. Really? Yes. So we are dealing with one suspect. At least the same gun. So who owns the car? Her name is Tiffany. And uh, she reported that car stolen that same morning after the incident. And so that kind of makes you suspicious. Absolutely. Chuck, where are we at on this deal? The homicide, three of the showcasings match the showcasings to all the robberies that they've been having. 
so it looks like we're dealing with the same guy. Their robbery suspect was targeting Hispanics. It seems like he shoots him in the leg. And he targeted Hispanic when he robbed Jose. Forgot to shoot him, run back in, shoots him in the hand. And then he robbed and shot the tingle. Shot him right in the torso. It was gotten more violent. I mean, he ain't shooting him in the leg no more. Right. You know, another point of interest is he's only targeted Hispanics, and the Batingos weren't Hispanic. Well, I don't think he really cared if they were Hispanic well, th or not. think about it. Maybe he does target Hispanics, but if he doesn't get what he wants, if you come walking out, he'll rob and shoot you, too. I think he'll take who he can get. He's gotten meaner, he's gotten more dangerous, and he don't, he's, he's trying to kill people now. And we've got to get this guy found. So what else we have? Um, Linda briefed me on a hit and run that they had. Police get a call to shots fired at Avondale Apartments in that area of Reservoir. Police roll up. Here's this car. It's a white car. It has hit three parked vehicles. Nobody shot. Nobody. No victims. No suspects. No nothing. Just a car that's crashed into three cars. Hit and run. But but the kicker is laying by the car is a 380 shell casing and then a 380 live round. Those shell casings match to our homicide. 911 caller said that there was three black males involved. Right. Looks like it was uh, two against one. I don't really know what happened there, but what we do know is that the guy that was shooting a 380, I mean, that's the guy that we need to find. Do we still have the car? No. But a lady named Tiffany is in possession of the car here. Well, she reported it stolen the next morning. So after? After the fact. Yeah, so that's it. it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think we need to get on this hit and run deal real hard. And go find her. Tiffany's going to know who's in her car, yeah, too, yeah, exactly. you would think. Exactly. Right now, we're heading out to Tiffany's house. I've made numerous attempts to try to reach her by phone. I uh, haven't had any luck at all, and we really need to get a hold of her. I don't see the car, do you? Mm -mm. Let me just leave a card. Uh -huh. We definitely need to get a hold of Tiffany. She gave that car to somebody. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was just bull. That car was not stolen. At 2 a.m., robbery detectives are called to investigate a robbery shooting in the reservoir area. The victim, Akshaya Nandam, was confronted by a suspect while returning home from the store. He is at the hospital now, receiving treatment for a gunshot wound to the leg. The suspect stole his wallet and left a 380 shell casing at the scene. I just got called to a shooting while in the parking lot, and it's in the general vicinity of where the uh, Batingo homicide took place. If these two incidents this morning, the Indian male, and now the one that we're heading out on match, the incident that happened with Mr. Batingo from earlier, we've got a guy out here at this point would almost be a serial killer. Got a Hispanic male, looks like multiple gunshots. Uh, uh, all we know right now is that the guy's name is Eric. Uh, we found several shell casings on the ground, and they appear to be 380. 380? Yeah, it's uh, real similar to our robbery suspect that we've been working on. We want to do ballistics on the shell casings to see if they match our other homicide and robbery. The victim is 24-year-old Eric German from Puebla, Mexico. He had been in Little Rock for four years and supported himself by working at McDonald's. He had a two-year-old son in Mexico, and he lived with his sister in the apartment complex where the shooting took place. Well, I did talk with his sister. He left about 6 o'clock like he does every morning. She says she hears about four gunshots. When she comes up here, he's laying there. Nobody's around him. Nobody running away. Just him laying there. 
We're scanning in this area in particular because we've got some pieces of evidence as well as the body. The body is here between two vehicles right outside the breezeway of the victim's apartment complex. We located spent shell casings on the concrete around the victim. They appear to be 380 autos. We located two apparent bullet strikes to the concrete, as well as three apparent projectile fragments, leading us to believe there may have been a struggle or he may have missed. We don't have a whole lot of witnesses right now, so they've got Detective Hudson, Detective Phillips doing the neighborhoods talking to people. And uh, if you think you. anything else, give us a call, okay? You got my car and everything, right? Okay. Chuck! I got something. What we got, buddy? Right above me, right there. Mm -hmm. Guy there saw the whole thing. Now we have two homicide victims. Eric German was just going to work in the morning when he was robbed and shot dead. Found several shell casings on the ground. And they appear to be 380. This guy isn't just a serial robber. Now he's a serial killer. Chuck! I got something. The guy there saw the whole thing. He says oh, uh, he saw the suspect and everything. He hears two to three shots. He and his girlfriend. They see the victims okay. down on the ground. The suspect's got him by like his shirt collar and says, you think I'm playing with you? And then they see the suspect shoot him in his leg. He grabs the victim's wallet. And then uh, he says he shoots him again in the chest, and uh, and then the suspect takes off running across the parking lot right here. But he says he can. He says he saw his face, and he can identify it. This does look like it is linked to the other robberies we've had throughout our town, and the other homicide that we had on Reservoir Road. Right now, I'm going to head back to the office, try to piece together some of this hit and run information that we have. So that's where I'm heading now. While Detective Ray was investigating this latest shooting, Detective J.C. White was able to make contact with Tiffany, the owner of the white car from the hit-and-run incident. The 380 casings found at that scene match casings from the Batango homicide and the other robbery shootings. I just got to talk to Tiffany, and she happens to have her boyfriend Shamar's ID. It turns out Tiffany has a boyfriend named Shamar Womack who fits the description of the suspect and has a history of criminal activity. She says that on the night of the incident, Shamar comes over, gets her car, leaves with her car, comes back the next morning and says, hey, you know, you need to report your car stolen. She's like, hey, why do I need to do that? Well, because I was out and two guys started shooting at me, so I had to ditch the car. This is the right guy that puts him in the car. We need to put a photo spread together and get a hold of him pretty quick. We're going to walk down to our robbery unit, our armed robbery unit. They're developing a photo spread of Shamar Womack. We need to get an ID right away. This could be our guy. Detective Ray and robbery detective Chuck Eason will show a photo array of Shamar to a victim from one of the earlier robbery shootings in the Reservoir Road area. He was probably actually the first robbery victim that we had. He's adamant that he can identify the... Uh, the suspect out of a photo spread, got a good look at him in the face. I'm gonna pull in, I'm gonna pull in right here. You wanna come in? Uh -huh. Now, uh, Andy, we're gonna show you a photo spread. Yes, it contains six pictures, so just take your time. Yeah. Close your eyes for a minute and think back to that night. You know, just picture him in your mind. Looks like, uh, that looks like that's yeah, the guy. Yeah. Number five. The witness IDs Shamar as the suspect who robbed and shot him. Yeah. Yeah, man. Detective Ray learns that the witness to Eric German's homicide this morning was not able to identify Shamar as the shooter. Bye, buddy. The detectives can still arrest Shamar for the robbery based on the positive ID by the robbery victim, but they'll need more to charge Shamar with homicide.
Right now we're going to be looking up some addresses, trying to locate Shamar Womack. If we can find some place where you think he may be coming or going from, we'll set up some surveillance cars and try to catch him. Verbena, which is, looks like his mother's address. Okay. That is the house. That's it. I'm going to have Detective J.C. White get back in contact with Tiffany, see if she's heard from Shamar, or maybe she knows another address where Shamar may be staying at. Tiffany. Is there any way you can call in and find out where he's at? All right. In the early hours of the morning, Akshayanan Dam, the man who was robbed and shot yesterday at 2 a.m., dies, becoming the third homicide related to this string of robberies. Akshaya, a native of India, was 26 years old and worked as an engineer for Falcon Jet Airways in Little Rock. With another homicide, the race to find key suspect Shamar Womack kicks into high gear. We still have surveillance teams out on the addresses that we have for Shamar Womack. Uh, they're going to stay there until we can actually find him, get him located, and get him down here. We're heading that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we'll sit back. Let's go. I just got a call from the guys out in the field, our surveillance teams. Looks like they've uh, rolled up on Shamar out by his mama's house off Burpina. Turn uh, west on Lake from Burpina. Detectives head to a staging area near Shamar's mother's house. When we hit the house, it'll be done uh, in a safe manner. The main goal is, of course, to get this guy in custody, but more important to all of us is to go home to our wife and kids. A car just pulled out of the driveway. Someone matching the suspect's description in it. We're going to try to have a unit go ahead and stop the vehicle, and let's just see if Shamar's in it. What's your name, dog? Now we have three homicide victims. Joseph Batingo, Eric German, and Akshay Nandamels. This guy is graduating from robbery and shooting to robbery, shooting, and killing. They've uh, rolled up on Shamar out by his mama's house. This vehicle left the house, had a couple of occupants. The passenger turned out to be our suspect, and we took him into custody without incident. While Shamar is escorted to headquarters by Detective Ray, Detective Simpson heads to Shamar's mother's house to execute a search warrant. This is bedroom. So we're going to start looking in here. Other detectives are in another room searching and see what we can find. Let's not hit him on any of the homicides or any of the robberies or anything right now. Let's just talk to him about the actual hit and run itself, all right? Because we got the shells on the ground. We know they match. We know the car belonged to his girlfriend. I mean, we should have enough to, you know, at least get him to admit that he was in the car. Absolutely. Got it. They ever go up on Reservoir Road? Never, never go up there. No, no, none about none sure. of that stuff up there. You got a girl? Tiffany, my, that's my girl. What kind of car has Tiffany got? A uh, white Impala. When was the last time you drove Tiffany's car? Yesterday? I haven't. No. A month ago? Give me a ballpark idea. Be advised that there's a snake in a cage up there and there's a blue snake down here. Any of our victims named uh, Dickerson? No. We really haven't found anything that uh, we've been looking for. Hadn't found a 380 or anything like that. Do you remember the car getting away from you and hitting some cars up on Reservoir Road? No, sir. Don't lie to me because I got half a dozen witnesses that saw it happen. All right, well, I'm through. You don't care about what a jury's going to say? You don't care about any of that? OK, All right, hold on. We're not getting anywhere with him right now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and charge him, put him in jail tonight with one of the aggravated robberies. Uh, he'll be locked up for the night. That'll give him a chance to stew about what we've already talked to him about. We'll bring him back over first thing in the morning. Detectives have discovered that one of the victims, Akshayanan Dam's credit cards, was used at a fast food restaurant and a video store in the hours after he was robbed and shot. This is, as far as I know, the first time that uh, the suspect has ever used a victim's credit card, so this, this could be a huge break for us. 
If detectives can determine who used Akshaya's credit card, they could have a lead on their suspect. Is that it? Yep. Chuck, there's a video. video? So let's go see it. J.C. White has obtained surveillance video from the fast food restaurant where the credit card was used. Maybe we'll get lucky. Come on, come on. This is the pay window, right? Yes. That's the right time, isn't it? All right, here we go. Here we go. Down, roll down. You can't see anybody in there. No. They don't roll the window down. Why? It's broke. It's broke? Let's see if we can get a license plate shot on it as it pulls up. Right there. We can't do anything with that, but that's a grand dam. That is a grand dam. It sure is. So we're looking for a red grand dam with a broke driver's side it's window. Well, we've got Shamar back in here. Uh, we're going to try a little different uh, strategy. Um, we're going to bring Linda Hudson in here and let her talk to him. Why? Maybe she can work her, her motherly wiles on him and get something. All, All right. we're hitting this guy with right now, Linda, is the car. Okay. So you got a little hard okay. to try nice. Just play with it. All right. Right now, our main emphasis is on that hit and run because it's the least of the offenses. Hey, Shamar, you cold? Yeah. Once we get him to admit to the car, then the shell casings that we got link him to all the other robberies as well as the three homicides. Okay, Shamar. Tell me about the car thing. Okay. I, I would feel much better once I find out why I've been charged with it. Okay, I'll make you a deal. You tell me why you left her car there, and I will go right now and find the detective that charged you with aggravated robbery and tell you everything about why you're charged with that. Some people were shooting at you? That's okay, that's what happened. Now, how, how many of them? Two of them. So you said a couple guys were shooting at you. I didn't say that. I... You, you did just tell me that. You oh, just God. told me some people were shooting at you. That's because that's what you said. Now you're pissing me off. Because you're wanting to play board games with me, okay? Oh. Is that what happened? Some guys were shooting at you? Now, could you please go find out why I'm trying to Yep, I will. Let me come in and just go over the basics of the robbery with you. Yes. I understand we finally got straight on the car issue. Why am I talking about you aggravated robbery? The victim is in a black male, fit your description, robbed him, and he picked you as the person that robbed him. Is he telling you? Let me tell you, none of got to it. That is the whole story. The dude was asking me for a ride, it was two of them. I was driving. It was a guy in the passenger seat, and it was a guy in the back seat. But when we got out there, man, dude in the passenger seat walked the gun on me. I get to touch the dude in the car, and somehow the car got knocked in reverse. The car bagged up, hit another car. So I fell out the car. I'm touching with him. The other dude get out and run out the back seat and get the gun. Dude, like, killed his mother. I ran up the hill. They fired two shots at me. Yeah. Yeah. Just barely, huh? Great, great. Yeah. Right here, man. So if there was any <laughs> shells or anything laying on the ground close to the car, that was from what, where they shot him. Where you shot him, me. Right. Not where you might have shot him. I never them. shot back because I never okay. had him. Okay. Uh, I need to find me. the two cats to try okay, to rob to you, man. Listen to me. The guy that was in the back seat, I think he in the county jail now. They called him Max. This other guy, does he have a street name? He looked the uh, brother. Okay, so he's little he's brother. Yeah. Which one snapped on you with the gun? The one that was in the front seat, Lil E's brother. Lil E's brother? Yeah. It was Lil E's brother's gun? Yeah. On the grid or something. Now, now we're getting there. He's got a bullet graze scar right here where he says he caught when he was running from them as they shot. So Shamar's not the shooter? Absolutely. He admits to being there now. He admits that's his girlfriend's car. He's afraid of the police, so that's when they concocted the story about the stolen vehicle. So the witnesses that saw the, the two against one and saw all that, the one was Shamar. Right. I mean, it sounds crazy, but it fits. Absolutely. So we're not looking for Shamar as our robber shooter. The two guys, they were the ones with the 380, not Shamar. According to him, he's getting out of Dodge because he's getting shot at. Right. And the guy that actually fired at Shamar is Max. And Max supposedly is in the county jail on some drug charges at this time. He's saying that it's uh, Little E's brother who brought the gun to the party. Right. Okay. And you believe Shamar? I mean, you... I, I, I do. I believe what he's saying now. At this point, what, he's got no reason to lie about it anymore. So we need to find Little E's brother. Absolutely. 
I like it. It's going well. Uh, Shamar's given us a couple names. Uh, one of the subjects, actually, he's been in jail for a while, so it doesn't look like he's going to be one of our players. Hey, Berwyn Square Apartments, don't we know a little E? Is it Johnson? The other subject, Shamar's given us, uh, he knew his little E's brother. Well, I happen to know who little E is, and his brother is Brandon Johnson. And according to Shamar, uh, he's the one that was supposed to own the 380. Definitely somebody that we need to find and talk with. And on another front, we still need to look for that uh, burgundy uh, Grand Dam. These are the printouts of all the red Grand Dams. Detective Hudson and Sergeant Maxwell searched the database for Red Grand Dams in the Reservoir Road area. Whoever used Akshaya Nandam's credit card was driving a Red Grand Dam. I'm going to try to get it narrowed down to any addresses that are near any of these homicide or robbery scenes. You know? Yeah. Oh, we're on it. We found the burgundy car. Okay. We're at it's at Reservoir. And Brandon Johnson was listed on the card. Sergeant Maxwell and Detective Linda Hudson have located a Burgundy Grand Dam up on Reservoir Road. Apparently he was involved in some type of driving without owner's consent where Brandon Johnson was listed as a suspect. I mean, that's a huge break. Come on, T, let's go find that car. Where are y'all going, Reservoir Road out there? Well, Reservoir. Yeah, we're going to find that car. Maxwell and Simpson head to the address of the Red Grand Dam on Reservoir Road. The Grand Dam is the detective's one positive link to their suspect. This is the 244. We're looking for a red Pontiac Grand Dam. Right here. Right there. That's it. That's the car on the video right here. This is it. Sergeant Maxwell and Detective Simpson confirm the Red Grand Am matches the one seen on the surveillance tape and arrest Brandon Johnson. Put your hands on the car, Brandon. What? What? I think man. What? What? I got one for it. I got a burgundy one, so. Unit two, eighteen twelve, war for transport. While Brandon is taken downtown for questioning, detectives begin a search of his girlfriend's residence where he has been staying. I'll get you some pictures. Bart, look here. Can you see what caliber that is? Looks like it's a Cobra 380. We found a 380. This is what we need to break this case wide open. Hey, Al, come here. Look at here. Homicide victim. All we just found is uh, two wallets. I have ID for German, which is one of our homicide victims, and also for Nad Dam. That wallet right there, also our homicide victim from uh, two days ago. The wallet, that one. This room contains three DVDs, all rented underneath uh, victims' names. Appears to be blood on the pants leg. We're going to take a swab of the possible blood on these jeans and test it with a phenolphthalein kit. It turned hot pink. This is, in fact, blood. Very successful search warrant. Found stuff that belongs to our homicide victims inside the house. I found the gun, uh, clothing. I mean, this is, this is what it's all about right here. The 380 found in Brandon's girlfriend's apartment is test fired at the ballistics lab. Projectiles recovered from the gun are compared to projectiles from the homicides and robbery shootings. They all match. All right, so tell me what am I doing there? Because I'm gonna have the information the child might want to know. Well, by all means, you know about the little burglar, one that tried to kill good people. Oh, you know something about that? I think I know who did it. Cause I think I heard him talking about it. Who do you think did it? Let's show a dude named Adrian. Adrian what? I don't, I don't know his last name. I swear to God, there's no Adrian. They call him Gucci. He said he shot Mexican in the leg. And I was like, what you shooting for? Because it was taking too long, bro. Why did he select this Hispanic guy? They they uh they uh, work a lot. He say, he say Mexicans keep money. He never told what kind of gun he was using or anything like that? No, sir. If you own a gun? No, sir. Be honest. I own a pistol. 
Well, Keep if you found a pistol in your girlfriend's apartment on the couch you let you sleep on. Oh, I, I wouldn't believe that. Okay. What if they found the victim's wallets under where you sleep at? Underneath the couch. Uh oh. That's gonna be pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah, it would. How you end up with two two dead gentlemen's wallet and a gun, okay, that matches the same firearm that was used to shoot and kill them? I mean, bro, I mean, sir, that's not the only 380. I, I swear to God. It is the only 380 used in all those, by the way. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Asian one who shot the man, Asian one who crept up on the robbed the man, Asian was the one who did it. Okay. But the only problem is all the evidence, physical evidence, you're done, man. While detectives Ray and White have been interviewing Brandon, detectives Hudson and Martin have been questioning his girlfriend. She acknowledges that she drove him to some of the incidents, and she says Brandon was the only one in the car. Mm -hmm. She drops him off, she leaves. He calls, she comes back, picks him up at the same spot. By himself? By himself. Is he trying to claim there was somebody other than him? Oh, yeah, he's saying it is Adrian Gucci. She's saying it was just him. Just him. Yeah. So he's by himself, as we suspected. Well, I think there ain't nobody but him involved in it. He had his girlfriend drive him around or drive him to the robber shootings and drop him off. The only reason I can think that he stuck around between the Jose and the Padangle shooting is waiting on his ride. I mean, I don't know why else you would do it. He had information about what happened, all three different homicides. Well, you found a gun under the couch he actually sleeps on. Right. We test fire the weapon. We know the projectiles all match from all the homicides and all the robbers, without a doubt, scientifically, that is the same gun. Yeah, the casings that were recovered at the hit and run scene, um, they do match the whole robbery series of shootings. Right. So, the casings that were recovered from the German homicide also match Mr. Nandam scenes as well as the Batingle homicide and the Jose battery. They match as well. So yeah, all, it's all tied together. You know, and then about Shamar, we got him identified in that early robbery early on. I mean, it could be a false positive. But uh, Shamar claims that he had no gun in the hit and run. We didn't see any other shell casings other than 380. I don't think Shamar's involved. So I, I do believe that Brandon Johnson robbed and killed three people. Mm -hmm. You know, the Batingles, Nandam, and Mr. German. Eric German, I mean, he was just a guy who worked for a living. He was just out there minding his own business. When he was robbed and shot dead. Mr. Batangle trying to take his mother home. And then Nandam, he, he was just returning from the store with his girlfriend or fiance. None of them resisted, and he just shot and killed them anyway. Yeah. And now we're looking at seven or eight other robbery shootings right. that Robbery's working on that he quite possibly did all of those himself as well. With the violence and, and the robbery being tied in as well, uh, there's no doubt we have the capital murder. Hopefully a jury will feel the same way, but I believe we have enough for a conviction. About two hours ago, three hours ago, we had nothing. And then everybody working together, the squad, uh, doing the job like they're supposed to do it. Hey, I promise, man. And the confessions, the evidence, the gun. Look, man, I did not know The guy just got hauled off to jail. All the cameras clicking. He was not happy with us. Brandon, have a seat. Have a seat. But, but this is a board. I guess he thought he was just going to get to go free. But wasn't the case. have a double robbery. This does look like it is linked to the other homicide that we had on Reservoir Road. You can see the back just to shoot you. Good. Does it look like this guy set out to kill him? It's hard for me to believe that was not intentional. Now we have two homicide victims. And he's graduated from robbing and shooting to killing. Now he's a serial killer. Who, like, killed his mother. 
This is what we need to break this case wide open. Anytime my, my cell phone rings early in the morning hours, you know it's not good. You don't call me out for any other reason than somebody's dead or there's a chance somebody's going to die. Chuck Ray was a robbery detective for 15 years before joining Homicide. He will be the lead investigator on this case. I uh, just received a call up on Reservoir Road to a uh, shooting. One of the victims was shot in the hand. Uh, another victim was shot in the abdomen. Uh, both of them have uh, already been rushed to the hospital. The subject that shot in the abdomen is not looking good. It's pretty severe. Were you the first unit here? Yes, sir. We got two different incidents. What happened? First victim, Hispanic male, said that he was coming out. And he saw a guy standing there. The guy told him, give me everything you got. The guy took his wallet, said the guy took a step back and shot him through his hand. The guy takes off running, coming down the sidewalk. Bad guy. Yeah. Okay. And he saw a mother and her son. She was loading stuff into her car. The guy shot the son and snatched the mom's purse. And she said he took off running in his hair. All right, let's see what we got down here. One shell casing is all that we've seen so far. It is a 380 caliber. Well, what we have is a, a double robbery. The victims didn't run, they didn't try to fight or resist. It's a particularly violent man who shoots people for no reason. The first shooting happened here at apartment 308. That was a Hispanic male, Jose. There was an apparent 380 shell casing laying just outside the door. The other shooting took place the next building down in front of the steps. A white male, Mr. Joseph Patingle, was found laying in the grass. In that same area, we've located some clothing, a blanket. Those could very well possibly be the victims. Sounds like he shot this guy, and he's running this way. Nope, hey, there they are. And no, he didn't run. He hung out here for like five or ten minutes. After he shot the gun? After he shot the first guy. After a normal person robs or shoots somebody, they want to get out of Dodge. They don't want to hang around. This guy, he don't care. He just hung around five, six, seven minutes. Just hung around. Odd. Very odd. This is Detective Ray. Don't care what time. Well, that was dispatch. The first victim was shot in the hand is in stable condition. He's going to be fine. The second subject was taken away to another hospital and a little after five, but he actually expired. The victim is 50-year-old Joseph Robert Batingle Jr. He was a professor of radiologic imaging sciences at the University of Arkansas Medical Center in Little Rock. He was taking his mother home after a visit when he was robbed and shot. He had two grown sons. Where are they all hiding? Here? Up here? Reservoir? Yeah, up are they there. spread out or just... No, they're pretty much up here. Robber unit. They've been working on a subject who is targeting Hispanics. The robber, even after he gets what he wants, when there's no reason to do it, he'll shoot the victim, I guess, just out of meanness. There are some similarities. The parent shell casing is of the same caliber type, 380. And we do have a Hispanic victim, so we better hope it's not the same guy. Nice to see you. Yeah, you can see this. A projectile actually struck one of the victims and ended up into this door jam. If we're able to retrieve it, we will send it to the state crime lab for ballistics. There is a lot of work left to be done here at the scene. The crime scene search unit is still here working, and they'll be working through the morning. 
I've got to get back to the office. There's uh, family members and witnesses that are there that need to be interviewed, and I'm going to head down there and start those interviews now. It looks like it's in pretty good shape for ballistics comparison to possibly get a match against a specific firearm here. I'm about to go in and interview Jose. He was the victim that was shot initially up on Reservoir Road uh, prior to the Batango homicide. He's been in our town for about four months. He's scheduled to return back to California tomorrow. Watching Chuck interview Jose, which is our first victim from this morning. And here's the account of it in his own words. Detective Kevin or Bart Simpson will be assisting on the case. Let's talk about the guy, white or black. Black. How tall? My height six foot. Tell me about tonight. What happened tonight? I went down to my park. I see him walk by me. And then all I remember is when I put my stuff down, he ran up on me, and that's when he had the gun in my fist. And I started to get everything in my pocket, and I told him, okay, you got everything now. And he started just picked up the blue bag, the wallet, and everything else inside, and just ran off. I thought he ran off. At least you know, I hear him come back. Shoots me once. Well, you said he come running back. Yeah. And did nothing more than just to shoot you. Yeah. Okay. A second spent shell casing has been located near where the homicide victim, Joseph Batengel, was found. It is also a 380 caliber. We are setting up the Leica scanner. It'll do a laser accurate scan of the entire crime scene. We're scanning is in front of the first stairwell where the first victim was shot in the hand. We found one 380 spent shell casing and inside the victim's apartment we located a projectile lodged in the door jam just inside the doorway. The second victim that was fatally shot was found lying just outside his stairwell. On the other side of the stairwell we found the second casing. It appears to be the same as the first, the 380 caliber. You know, I finished interviewing uh, Mrs. Patango as well as Jose, and Jose tells me that the guy that did it is six foot tall, 200. Both of them said that the suspect shot him after they complied. Have you talked to Robbery or, or anybody about this guy? It sounds like the same deal we've been having with the 380 and the Hispanics and all that. He's been shooting them even after they comply and stuff. Maybe they've got a piece of information that'll help us find out this, who this guy is. How many robbery shootings since he started? Seven. That's where the victims were actually shot. All 380s. What he does is he basically comes up on them, does his robbery, and before he leaves, he generally shoots them. Almost always in the leg. The victims in these cases, have they all been Hispanic? All but one are Hispanic males, but we do have one white male. But that's predominantly who he's after? Yes. It's common knowledge on the street that a lot of times they don't like to use banks. They'll keep their uh, currency on them. What kind of guy is this that after he robs somebody, he comes back and shoots them? When he, I mean, they've complied. It's like his calling card. But until this morning, he never killed anybody. Correct. Does the ammo of them this morning match the ammo of the ones that you've had? It does. Same basic description every time. He's six foot, uh, slim build. And he, he's always by himself. Nobody ever sees a car. Everything seems to, to uh, push us. That he lives on a reservoir yeah. somewhere. You all already have your shell casings at the crime lab, all of them? Yes. Get mine out there as soon as I can. because We won't know for sure if we're dealing with the same gun until we have our the ballistics tests done. But, you know, the ammo is definitely pointing that direction in the 380. Right now, Detective Simpson and I are heading out to meet with Dr. Kokus at the Arkansas State Crime Lab. He's completed the autopsy, and we are hoping that we can gain some information that would lead us in the direction that we need to go. What are we looking at, Doc? These are the x-rays of Mr. Batangle's upper torso, lower abdomen. He's just shot one time. He had an entrance wound just along the lower edge of the front right rib cage. As it traveled through the abdomen, it caused a considerable amount of internal bleeding.
That bullet was recovered. It is consistent with the 380. Does it look like this guy set out to kill him when he shot him? The bullet did strike a known vital area. It's, it's hard for me to believe that the fact that he was struck where he was struck was not intentional. Right now we're heading out to our ballistics lab to take the uh, 380 shell casings from our homicide um, and have them compared to the 380 shell casings and the numerous robbery shootings that we've had in our city. We won't know till the shell casings are matched if the person that we're looking for is the same suspect that our robbery detectives have been looking for. We brought that uh, shell casing that we talked to you about earlier from the homicide that we had this morning. Yeah. I know that you've been working on the robbery shootings that we've had, the rash of them that we've had. Is there any way that I could get you to kind of pull it up? Yeah. The homicide cartridge case is going to be on the right side, and the robbery cartridge cases are going to be on the left side. I'm looking for what we call chamber marks, and those occur when the uh, cartridge case is actually lifted from the magazine into the chamber. When it's pushed forward by the slide, the cartridge will hit the ramp going into the barrel of the chamber. And that can leave characteristics that can be linked back to a particular firearm. All right, guys, remember I've got the uh, robbery on the left and the homicide on the right. You know, in my heart, I'm sitting there hoping that it ain't the same guy, because if it is, this guy's escalated to a whole new level. Uh, we've got some chamber marks here, guys. Mr. Joseph Batingo was shot, and his mother was robbed. We've had a string of robberies out in this area. The shell casings on every scene looks like a 38. We won't know for sure if we're dealing with the same gun until we have ballistics tests done. If it is the same guy, this guy's escalated to a whole new level. Uh, we've got some chamber marks here, guys. I'm gonna pull up on the screen and show you some chamber marks that I found uh, towards the case mouth. As you see here, we've got good individual characteristics from the cartridge cases being chambered into the gun so that I can conclusively say that at some point, both of these cartridge cases were uh, chambered in the same firearm. 100% sure it's the same weapon that cycled or chambered both these rounds. Yeah, it's the same, same gun. Oh, well.